Hi, I'm David Henry from LearnStagelighting.com and in this video I want to talk to you guys about putting MIDI controllers, specifically this Akai APC40, to be able to control lighting consoles. And so the first thing that you're going to need to do with an Akai controller on these APC40s, the 40 Mark IIs, and some other controllers that are designed for Ableton Live is you need to set them in the correct mode. And so on boot up, this is always going to default to Ableton Live mode. And what I don't love about Ableton Live mode, I'll set it down here to show you, is that these track selections here actually operate some different banks and when you click them, it, it changes what all these other buttons do and, and messes things up with your MIDI mapping. It's, it's really, you know, it's designed for Ableton and it doesn't really make sense to me with what I want to do with lighting. and It just makes things confusing. So I always want my MIDI controllers, whether it's an Akai unit or one from somebody else. And I've got a Korg Nano control actually across the room. I always want it to just be simple. I don't want banks and other things to be changing on me inside of the controller. Now I might do that inside my console, but inside of the controller, I don't want to do that. So that's step one with an Akai APC40. In fact, this is uh, the original, not the Mark II. I actually picked it up on eBay. It was pretty cheap. So that's a good place to get these. Now, once you've got it in that correct mode, I personally like the alternate Ableton Live mode for uh, this APC40 here. You get it in that mode, now it's time to MIDI map. So you've got a few options. The first, of course, thing to know is that this is a USB MIDI device. And so if you're going to MIDI map it with a hardware console, you're either going to have to network it or you're going to have to use a bone box to get it to five pin MIDI. Now, if you're using a PC based console or again, networking it uh, with a PC software to your main console, whether that's Martin MPC, a Grand MA, um, I don't know, I believe Hogs can probably mini map, um, you're going to need to map it. So how does that work? Well, if you're on Martin M series or on Grand MA2, this is really simple. There's a killer utility called MPC Tools and GMA Tools made by Ricardo Diaz. And he's this awesome Portuguese developer who makes it easy to simply go ahead, define everything you need to define. You press the buttons, you define it in the software, then you tell the software what you want every button to do. In fact, if you get fancy, you can even configure the color playback and uh, a quick Google search on the Akai forums and other places can show you exactly how to do that. Now, some other pieces of software that you might enjoy MIDI mapping with are um, NTech DMX's D-Pro by NTech as well as Chave's Shitho Express. Now, one of the things I like about these consoles, they're a little more entry level, but they're really designed from the ground up to work with MIDI controllers like this. So when you hit MIDI learn and press a button, the MIDI learns that button, learns that fader, learns that knob, and it's easy. Also, the color feedback works in all three of those programs straight out of the box. So you don't even have to do anything special. Now, when I am MIDI mapping a console, I, I really like to do a hybrid of different approaches. Of course, I like to set my faders as playback faders. I generally, on this APC40, really like to have my buttons here as playback buttons, okay? So I like to have this as the buttons over top of the fader in your console, you know, your play, your pause, your stop. Um, those buttons that work with this playback fader, not uh, individual playback buttons. Then this awesome grid up here, I like to have as playback buttons. Buttons that when I press, I get a different cue, a different lighting look that I've defined. Then over here on the knobs, I generally like to turn these in to programming controls. Um, in Martin NPC, for example, I like to use this here as my uh, main programming controls up here and my effects down here 
and then I use these for some different attributes and uh, I like to program these just as some inhibitive faders, some faders that I use to inhibit the level of certain lights on the stage. And so no matter what console you're using, I hope this tutorial on MIDI mapping has really helped you. And if it has, hey, go check out the full post over on LearnStageLighting.com. I've got a full post about MIDI mapping for lighting consoles, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. While you're over there, I'm going to have a free download for you, a guide that you can use to get better at lighting and to start with lighting if you're brand new. So if you're brand new to lighting or you just want to take things to the next level, hop over there, grab that free guide I've got for you, and check out the full post explaining how to mini map in different consoles. I'll see you guys there. Thanks.